So much for the bike show. It's postponed. All right, welcome back YouTube. It rained all morning this morning. So the show has been canceled. I scrubbed and polished this girl all Friday night, every nook and cranny. She was ready to go and kick some ass in the sportster class. But uh, that's not happening. As you can see from the first clip that rained real hard yesterday, it's supposed to rain today. Steltsy, come get this dorky helmet out of my garage before someone thinks it's mine. So they rescheduled the bike show for uh, one of these weekends coming up. So we'll get her there. In the meantime, let's go work on the flathead. Fall is coming. You can see all the leaves are falling down. Yeah, now the sun comes out, but it's a good thing they canceled that show. It rained all morning. The leaves are dropping already. It's coming. Can't wait for fall. Okay. Let me turn some light on in here. This is what we're going to do today. I'm going to drain the oil in the tank and I'm going to remove the oil pump. Drain the oil, drain as much as I can out of this line, the feed line, and then remove all these bolts here, those four. Um, no, how, no matter how cautious I am at draining stuff, any fluid, gas, oil, I always make a mess. No matter what I do to prevent it, somehow I'll make a mess. But all right, let's get into taking this oil pump off. I'm gonna put this in time lapse, not to bore you, or fill this video full of my childish jokes and pop-ups, so. I'll be right back. guys as you can tell from that time-lapse video <clears throat> we got the oil pump off here she is 
There's the two veins. I um, let me um, clean everything up real quick. I want to clean everything up, clean the table up, get some tools up. Then we will dissect this oil pump together, pull everything out of it, and maybe if it's feasible, I'll try to weld that up. But uh, welding on sand cast iron, it's, it's, uh, it's tough because there's a lot of uh, air pockets and sand cast. You can develop leaks in other places. Um, it's tough to get all the oil and contaminants out of the metal because it's leaking oil from there. So you'd have to cook it in the oven for a little while, several times. It's a hard process. I've done it before. I've had success, but um, I might try it out um, or just get myself a new pump, you know, to be safe. And the other thing you could do wrong is when you're welding it, you could co collapse an internal passage somewhere in here. And that would be horribly bad if oil couldn't get where it needs to go. So let me clean everything up. And obviously you see from that video, Sky is very bored. So let me uh, get her out of here, let her do something. Let me clean it up and we'll come back to uh, dissecting this pump. All right, I tried to set up the best way I could film without giving you a shot of my crotchal region. I don't want that happening. I want you to focus here and not here. So this is the best setup I could find. But anyway, here's the oil pump. I have a two vein, these are veins, this two vein oil pump. What I found right off the bat is that this pump is for a 41 and later model flathead because it has two check valves in it, here and here. I'm only supposed to have one check valve. Now, it probably doesn't hurt your flathead engine, but this is my 1940 and earlier. It only has one check valve and a regulator. I have two check valves in the regulator which is in this schematic shows the two check valves with the regulator that's for 41 and later so i imagine it doesn't hurt your engine but so right off the bat i don't have the exact pump now these are your veins like i said two veins when this spins around centrifugally as you go faster, it'll build up more pressure. If you see, there is air gaps here. There, that's on purpose like that. It's centrifugal, centrifugal force will squeeze that oil and make it go in the directions it needs to go through the passages to pump to your engine. So that's that. Let me break her all down in front of you. Let's start by taking out check valves. Again, I'm trying to keep my crotch out of the shot. There'll be a ball bearing and a spring. One of the book one of the things the book says to look for, you know, broken springs or stretched springs. So here's the first guy. It's totally fine, if you ask me. Just keep that one there. There'll be a ball bearing in here. One of the things you have to do is take a look at the ball bearing for any uh, pitting, any lines of pitting, that it's not seating properly. This is a check ball to not allow, when you shut your engine off for the oil leakage, 
to bypass, I guess, from your tank into your pump, into the crankcase. So I have seen that you can uh, weld this on the end of a tool, use a little lapping compound, and grind, grind the seat like you do a valve job. You grind it smooth. Buy new. These are so cheap. You buy new ball valve, uh, ball bearings, and then you got a good seat. So that's like something you're supposed to do during the service. Let's take the. Uh, the next check valve out. That spring appears to be fine. I like to use a little tray because if I drop something, it's contained in the tray. I don't see any pitting on this ball bearing. So that looks good. I believe everything I've read and, and saw that these ball bearings are interchangeable. I will try to keep them where they need to be. And now, onto your pressure regulator. Get this not so slippery. This is what actually provides pressure to your crank pin. And the higher the speed, the higher the pressure. This is just a cap. This is a cap down in here. Is a a set screw. When you install this, you drop the ball bearing down in, the, in there, then the spring set screw. You bring it all the way till it just touches the ball bearing, and then you back it out until it's from the the surface of uh, your pump here, three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to stop the camera and measure that right now just to see where the last guy had set it. Kind of looks like three-eighths of an inch to me, but let me go get my, uh, my measuring device. All right, there's that set screw. That has to be three eighths inch deep. You get yourself a, a depth gauge. Make sure you're not going down into the slots of the uh, set screw. I'm trying to, it's not very easy. All right. That's the depth right there. I can't really read those little marks. Let me measure it. What I found is it's shy of the 3 eighths of an inch. It's a 16th shy. So that pressure regulator in, that pressure regulator set screw is not in deep enough. It needs to go in another 16th to get the 3 eighths of an inch. It's shy according to that. So that's something I'll address reassembling it. I'll have to read on, uh, is uh, um, too deep 
more oil pressure or not so deep less oil pressure I'll, I'll read up on that i don't know off the top of my head but i hope it's the other way around i hope it gives me more oil pressure now this setting is debatable because a lot of guys will run different pressures if they're racers of a flathead or whatnot if they're racing their flathead I, I guess they'll want more oil pressure but i'm just going by the harley manual that they want three eighths of an inch depth so I guess you could put whatever you want, whatever you desired. I don't want anything that's going to blow my motor up. So I want what Harley wants. I'll address that later. All right, let's take this set screw out. Now it's slotted differently, so you gotta be careful. Yeah, you have to use the, these slots. The other slots will make it tighten up on your threads and you won't be able to get it out. get that goo off of there before I go any further. I don't want it to uh, get down in there. Nope, oh, that's the wrong, wrong slot. That's the slot. I'll show you in a minute why it does that. All right. Here's the set screw. There's a long slot and then there's a short slot. If you put it in your screwdriver in the long slot, it'll expand the set screw and not make it work right. It'll, it'll bind up in your threads. But anyway, set screw and then another spring. Come on, baby. This spring is larger, and there's a, an exact size they want to see, a measurement. So I got to measure all these springs and make sure they're within spec. And then there'll be a ball bearing, and there she is. Um, right now, I don't see any pitting or any lines on any of these uh, ball bearings, but I'll inspect them better once I clean everything up. Everything has to be cleaned up with gasoline or, I don't know, brake clean. Everything's got to be cleaned up and douched out real nice and clean. Super clean when you put it back together. Now you got this guy here. You got your veins. All right, I'm going to have to set, set you down. I need a couple little smaller tools. Come right back to this. All right, my camera's about to die, but I'll just change the battery. As I said before, these, these veins right here, one and two, as this is spinning, spinning around, uh, this way rather, the faster it goes, there's a spring in here. There's a spring in here that'll separate these out to build up more pressure the faster you're going and then the spring will come back in the lower uh, rpms you're turning so so you take these veins out okay here it comes so here you got the veins and the spring The veins look good. The 
there's your spring. Spring looks fine, no brakes in it. Keep everything together. And now, this guy can pop out. And there should be a uh, pressure relief plunger. I'm getting a phone call. That's great. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll take this time to change my battery in my camera. Enter this. Okay, I'm back from changing the battery. Now it's time to pull out the pressure relief. Oh. Okay, we got this guy out. And then there is a... I'm not liking what I'm seeing. This pressure relief pin here is supposed to move freely back and forth and mine is not. Let me let me dig into the book make sure on a 40 from a 41 it's not different. So hang in there. Let me get right back with you. All right, I was wrong. This plunger is freely moving. It's going back and forth. Um, you can't see it, but this is the pressure relief. If you've got too much pressure, it's going back and forth freely. So I was wrong about that. It's okay. Ah, oh, shit. Hang on a second. Who is it? Hey, Bob. Oh, what's up, Repo? Your bike blow up again? Nah, I didn't blow the clutch in it yet. All right. I actually just came down to hang out. All right, my man. Okay. All right, look, um, let me get, I'm going to take a break right now, and I'm going to hang out with him, and then uh, I'll get back to this. Hey. Now, I can't, really can't get any work done. Stealthy just showed up. What up, people? Rod's hey, hey. still here. Security really systems can't, here. The security system showed up. <laughs> I really can't get any work done now. Ain't nothing to do. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so she's completely dissected. Um, this is not the way I wanted to finish the video tonight. But I can't get any more work done. I got friends over. That's just how it is. Um, what I did want to leave you with is with my brother's with my brother's iron head I ordered up Brand new rims, uh, front and back, new tires, uh, new fender. So I ordered all that up so I can keep the uh, 71 Ironhead build going. So I'm going to have to end it here because I got friends over. Sorry about this. This is not how I wanted it to end. All right, see, here's the reality of filming YouTube. The best laid plans aren't always the best I um, things don't work out the way they want I want them to so I will get back to this I need to go to Nick cycle salvage and see if he can't come up with a 1940 pump for me because um, welding this thing doesn't look really feasible so I need a new one I will get back to you when I do that. I'd like to bring you along to Nick's Cycle Salvage. It's a really cool place. Talk to you guys later.